Okay, anyway, this is a warthog, not a hog wart. And if you can see him kneeling down, that's the only way that they can eat, is by kneeling. And they're not the prettiest animal in the world, but you know, they've got their place. Oh, this is Victoria Falls in um, Zimbabwe. Actually, it's Zimbabwe and Zambia. And if you see the rainbow, there are rainbows everywhere on Victoria Falls. And right now you can see I'm dry. There is no way to visit Victoria Falls and stay dry. By the time I got back to the hotel, I had put on a raincoat, a poncho, and an umbrella, and there was not a dry spot anywhere. And this is from the top of the falls looking out over the edge. It's just, it's amazing. You can, you can get wet from a mile away just because of the power of these falls. But everywhere you look, there's umbrellas. And that bridge goes from Zambia to Zimbabwe. And here I'm standing right on the bridge looking at the river, the Zambezi River going down. And I dropped some of my husband's ashes right there. And some more of it. Now, this is in uh, Zimbabwe, and it's an elephant safari. And these are very well treated animals, and they love, they love to go on safari. And they like having people, and they let the babies come along with the elephants so that if they want to be with their mom, they can. Now, this is a Nyala. And we saw this while we were on safari. And again, following the elephant's trail, I was just trying to get the uh, shadows here. And these fellows played for us at night and they were great. They were absolutely fantastic. Now we are in Botswana. I didn't spend too much time in Zambia and Zimbabwe. I went primarily for um, the falls, but in Botswana, it, there are more elephants in Botswana than any place else in the world. And a fish eagle, which you can easily spot, they sit up in the dead trees, and with that white head, you can pick them right out. And this guy is a pied wagtail that was riding with us on the boat on the Chobe River. So this is in the Chobe area. And you can see the termite mound here. It, uh, <laughs> they're big, they're really big. And we have some helmeted guinea fowl and they, they kind of are right on the edge of the Chobe. And this is just some scenery along the river. It's absolutely amazing. And they have the best sunrises and sunsets in the world. They seem to last forever. Just to give you an idea. These are all along the Chobe. Now this is an impala, female impala, pretty young, actually. And a pied kingfisher, not a great picture, but I was taking it from quite a ways away. And the water buffalo. Now, you might not believe it, but this is a starling. It's called the Glossy Starling, and their starlings are absolutely beautiful, but just as obnoxious as our starlings. You don't want to have any food around or they will dive bomb you and take it. And this is a black crested snake eagle. The eyes are just amazing. A lot of these animals just have absolutely gorgeous eyes. And the baboons were everywhere. And uh, that's really where you don't want to have food. If They'll go right into the camp and they'll raid the camps. And they'll 
take any food they can get a hold of. And they tend to do a lot of damage over there. And here we have an impala, a male, and obviously a baboon. I love it when the animals are together, different species, and then you see the termite mound in the background. And a little little guy. And a really little guy. And a mama and daddy. And this is a lilac breasted roller. I think I showed you these in the other one, but they're just so beautiful. close up and let me see we have a oh this is a a water thick knee and I guess you can see by the knees why they call them a thick knee I'm not sure and a black slip let me try this again blacksmith lapwing on the water and again we have some impalas young you can tell they're young because if you saw the older impala that the horns kind of zigzagged in and out and what it is is these are about a year old because there's only one curve on the antlers Whereas as they get older, they start curving in different directions back and forth. And if you count the curves, that's about how many years old they are. And a couple of giraffes. Um, and I think the one closest is pregnant. And here we have uh, Wahlberg's Eagle. And again, not a hogwart, but a warthog. Again, kneeling. A hippo, I put this one in, it's not the best picture of a hippo, but just to show you the scars they accumulate just during a lifetime because uh, when you see the teeth, you realize why. And this is called the little egret. And obviously a croc. And African darters, after they dive in the wood, they cut the wood, the water, <laughs> the woods, the water, they come out and spread their wings so that they can dry them. Otherwise they can't fly. So they're a little at risk at this point because they've got to get those wings dry before they can fly away. And that's a red cormorant. I'm not quite sure. Maybe because the eyes are red or the red spots on the beak. Yeah, I guess it's on the beak, but they're called a red cormorant. And this is I love these guys. This is a hammer cop. And again, I'm not sure why they're called that, but. And a uh, water lizard, water monitor, actually. And a course, this is, I wasn't sure. This is either a courser or a plover. And this is another water thick knee. But you can see that the the eyes kind of go from yellow to green and back and forth. And this guy is a white crowned lapwing. And these guys, these yellow butterflies, they live on this mud because there's salt in the mud and they go after the salt. And again, a baboon family. just kind of grooming each other. And I'll bet you know what this is, a dung beetle. And African geese, which are pretty much everywhere down there. 
and an African snipe. And a cattle egret, obviously, an elephant. This guy's probably just, I'd say a teenager based on the length of his tusks. And you can see the sweat glands on the side of his face. And those eyelashes are to die for. <laughs> in a family, they, they like to roam around in families, and especially in Botswana. I mean, you see an awful lot of good-sized herds, which in other places are not as prevalent. This one's a little older. And they roll in the mud to keep themselves cool. Otherwise, they would pretty much fry. The little ones are so cute. I don't know if you know, but elephants have 75,000 muscles in their trunk alone, just in their trunk. And when they're young, they don't know how to use all the muscles. So the trunks kind of fly back and forth and all over the place. And they just kind of run and their trunks just wave back and forth. It's really cute to watch. But the families do take care of each other. Why aren't we moving? Oh, okay, here. Okay, so here we've got elephants and some impala. I love them when their ears are flapping. And of course, that's how they keep themselves cool besides the mud and the impala. And again, a big elephant. That, that was a really big guy, as is this one. They have three sets of teeth. Now, the trunks, the uh, tusks are one set. And then they've got two other sets that are further back. I'll show you when I. I get to a skull and they move forward as one falls out through their lifetime and of course they have very long lifetimes those other teeth move forward but they move forward in a set and there may be like six on each side in a set and this guy is adorable uh let me see what we've got here what the heck is this one I think this is, a, oh, it's a young Orby, which are pretty difficult. You don't normally see them. Okay, obviously, a lion calling for a mate. And here's the mate. They came. And here they are mating. And they will mate for up to eight days every 10 minutes or so 10 or 15 yeah right a lot of stamina <laughs> a lot of stamina but these guys uh it's amazing and this was after the round one of the rounds of mating that we watched and here they are i smell humans I think this one was just waiting for one of us to get out of the truck, licking her chops. And here we have a, where the heck am I? A kudu. And a, a sable antelope. All of these, all of these, um, different animals I'm showing you are, are actually antelope of some type or another, but they're all considered the antelope family. These guys have horns that are just unbelievable. And this is a striped kingfisher. Oh, this was lunch. Uh, we went into a village and we went to a woman's house for lunch 
And one of the things she served us were these caterpillars. They're about two inches long by about a, an inch across. And if you can see the little feet, they kind of stick into your cheeks when you're trying to eat them. These are cooked. Not the best tasting things, and but you know, I'll try whatever. And this is this is the woman and one of her kids. Baby elephant, just kind of prancing around. And a few more. Oh, a water buffalo. And these guys spend, they do spend a lot of time in the water to stay cool. And a vervet monkey, as bad as the baboons are in terms of uh, getting into things, the vervet monkeys are a lot worse. They're the ones that emptied out my tent and took everything outside while I was gone and spread it all over the woods. Unzipped my suitcase to get to this stuff. Cute, but trouble. Another dung beetle. Come on. Oh, well, wait a minute. Can I go back? No, okay. Well, anyway, that was a giraffe, but we've got more. Okay, this is a um, impala, and the birds on its back are oxpeckers. And the oxpeckers will get on just about every kind of mammal to clean them off. And it's, it's a very symbiotic relationship. You know, they, they clean off the animals and they get fed. So it works great. Now, that's why I showed the picture with the uh, scars on the hippo, because this is what causes the scars. You can see the two teeth in front and the two teeth that stick, stick out to the side. This is why they kill more animal, more people in Africa than any other animal. These two looked like they were smiling, the mother and the baby. I just love that one. And this is an older kudu male. Now see all the spins on the uh, horns? Again, that's because as they get older, they get more and more twists and turns on those horns. And there's a female. And this is a Cory Bustard. And these guys run, and, and very often they're called road runners. Now that's a well hung elephant. That's not an extra leg. And these are two teens practice fighting. It wasn't a vicious fight, but they were practice fighting. Evening on the Okavango. And hippos, and you can see the baby hippo right there next to the mama. And another little egret. I love it when the multiple kinds of animals are together. The zebras are usually with the impalas. Now it's very rare to see a giraffe lying down because they have such a tough time getting down and getting back up again. And I'm not quite sure why this one was lying down, but uh, he was. And there we have, it looks like two females. I can't quite tell because of the, um, the hair on the top of the um, antlers. Eh, probably a female and a male. This guy's just scratching his trunk. And I actually saw an elephant pull down a tree that big. It was unbelievable. And here we have an African scopes owl. And 
and an orange horn bill. Oh, this was kind of the type of room we stayed in. It's not what you'd call roughing it. This was uh, actually this was more of the uh, more rustic rooms compared to some of them. And some this was a hut, but a lot of times the tents are even more elaborate. Now here you've got a yellow horn bill and an orange horn bill. Again, sunset. Lying near the water at sunset. It that's the best time to get pictures of them because if you go to the watering holes in the evening, the animals are all hanging out there. I just like the reflection. They are beautiful. And the elephant, obviously. Bunch of zebras. A dazzle of zebras, to be specific, is what it's called. Or a tower of giraffe. Now this is the elephant skull I was telling you about. You can only see one set of teeth plus where the tusks came out. So this was an older elephant because he had already lost some of the other teeth. But we happened to find this along the side of the road. Now see this, this is to save weight on the skull. So otherwise their heads would kind of fall down from all the weight on them. So they're actually kind of honeycombed. Okay, and it, obviously we've got a lilac breasted roller and a hornbill. I can never get too many of these. Okay, where am I here? Excuse me a second while I find my place. There we go. That was a spur foul. Now this is the kind of vehicles we drove around in both at Chobe and um, at Sabute. And this was just coming into Sabute, we were passing another vehicle. But they're great unless you get an afternoon rainstorm and then they don't do you a hill of beans. But the zebras just kind of hang out and look at you. Oh, this one you can see either a lion or a hyena got him in the rear end. He seems to be okay, but it obviously took a large chunk out of him. I love them because they're so nosy. They're kind of like horses. Well, they are horses really, but they just, they love to look at you. And in the, every evening you'd have a sundowner. And this one happened to be, they took us out to an island. No, I guess this isn't an island because there's a truck back there. But um, this was right on the edge of one of the, the um, well, part of the uh, Sabute. Or, and they fixed us spreads that were unbelievable. And so many smiles. Oh, my gosh. Great people. Absolutely lovely. And this is looking out at sunset. The clouds were just spectacular that night. You can go a million times and every time you go it's different. But the, the water on the, the sunset on the water is just amazing. Okay, now this is, excuse me. Oh, this was the, the Rookery Island. We actually, we took a boat out to this little island and it was a rookery. There were all kinds of birds nesting. I mean, there had to have been 20 different breeds of birds. And these guys, I just happened to catch them as they were flying off in opposite directions. And this is one of my favorite photos, but um, I really, these are, these are, you saw before the little egrets, these are the great egrets. 
and this guy was just lounging in the water. It was a hot afternoon and just having a great old time in amongst the lily pads. And this guy was calling out. Oh yeah, this is part of that pair or another pair actually. It was mating season, obviously. And Paula. And a vulture. And vultures were everywhere. Now here's a what's called a tower of giraffes for obvious reasons. And some zebras that no two have the same stripes. They're all very different. And as they get older, their skin gets darker. So if they're very light, they typically are uh, younger. Magpies, that's a terrible picture, but I just wanted one of the magpies. And this guy was just kind of looking at us. I love to get close-ups of the eyes, but that's just me. And by the way, I, I took this one just because there was a picture of elephant poop down there. But you can tell whether you are, whether it is a female elephant's poop or a male elephant's poop, because the female elephant's poop and the pee are all in one spot. And the male, it's split and there's like a foot or two between them. So that's how you can tell what you're looking at. And we had a guy that was happy to pick it up constantly. <laughs> Family walking off. And this is a water buck. Again, a type of antelope, but a slightly different kind. They're just beautiful. And of course, a couple yellow hornbills. And this is a wildebeest, probably the ugliest of the antelope. And you can see the damage to the elephant's ear. He actually had a hole clear through it from a fight at some point in his life. It was, he had a piercing. And here we have a crowned lapwing. and some cheetahs. These cheetahs were absolutely mind-boggling. I, I am, they are my favorite cat of any cat. They are just amazing. And they play just like kittens. I wouldn't want to get bitten by those teeth, but they do play like kittens. And actually, cheetahs are probably the safest animals for a human to run into because sometimes they'll just lay down next to you. If you're laying down taking a photo, there's a possibility the cheetah will come lie down next to you. Come on, why is it sometimes this doesn't work? There we go. This guy was doing his stretch. And now they're on the hunt. They had seen some uh, animals way out in another field and they were just kind of sneaking up to them. Of course, they can run very fast, but only for short distances. Now these are white rhinos. They're not white, but the word comes, it's a Dutch word that was translated into Afrikaans, and it's it's pronounced wide, and it's because their lips on the white rhino, they're uh, they have like a square mouth, and so the, the the mispronunciation of wide became white, hence they were called white rhino, but you can see the long face and they. You can't really see the mouth here, but these have a very wide mouth. 
and that's because they're grazers. I'll show you black rhino later. Also, they have only one big tusk. Two elephants fighting in the water. But they walked away together, so I guess they made up. Now, I was out on a night safari. It was just my guide and I, and we ran into this couple. And we had been running into this set of lions every single day. And this was their eighth day of mating. And we sat there for probably 45 minutes and watched these two. And they probably mated three or four times during that 45 minutes. And then she would just, she would just, get out of there and she'd flop. She was exhausted. And it was funny and he'd take a short nap and then he, they were back at it. Okay, so now we are at, let me see, uh, African crowned hawk. We're, by the way, we're in South Africa now. We've uh, changed locations, but this is a um, crowned hawk, and these are little bee eaters. They were so cute, and the colors are just beautiful. And this guy is a giant hornbill. Now, you saw the other hornbills, but this one is probably three to four times larger, primarily on the ground. Um, but you can spot them, obviously, by the red <laughs> around their head. But they're, they're amazing. They're, they're very rare over there. But I did manage to get a few shots of them, and I love the eyelashes. Look at this. Love that face. And this was on an island uh, out in the middle of a, a um, uh, what do they call it? It's like a reservoir, but it's, they call it something else. I can't remember right now. But um, these are comb ducks and pygmy geese. And obviously, a lilac breasted roller, an elephant peeking out from the bush. And I'm not sure what these were. <laughs> oh, so it was the full moon, and it was, um, it was a blue moon, and the full moon. And we happened to be out driving around and didn't we run into a, a very large herd of elephants on the side of a hill and the moon was peeking up over the top of the hill. I mean, it could not have been a more perfect location, time or, or night. It was just beautiful. And you can see the, the scars. These lions do tend to fight with each other. Well, there's another one going at it. As I said, we were there during the mating season. <laughs> okay, and here we have a gray heron. You can't really see the gray until the wings open up, but you can kind of see it on, on the underside. And a couple more elephants. and hawk eagles up in the trees, a pair of them, and a leopard. And this guy was beautiful, just beautiful. And here's some more of the, um, the water buffalo with the oxpeckers. 
and this guy was in that that water hole and it was just a, a hole that had been dug out all day long and the ox peckers were there all day long we left in the morning and when we came back in the afternoon still there This is a reed buck. They have very fine little legs, but they're adorable. And here's our leopard at night. We went back and we knew he had some food stashed somewhere. So we kind of waited and he climbed up in the tree and we had seen the impala up in the tree, the dead impala. They keep them up there so that none of the other animals will get to them and they can keep the meat for themselves. And so we shined a spotlight up there at night while he was having his fill. Come on. Why does this lock up sometimes? Okay, now <clears throat> we have another rhino. Let's see where we are here. That's another white rhino. And another burbot. Now, this is the unusual part of the burbot monkeys. You've heard the expression blue balls? Well, that's them. This is a female. She's older because her skin is darker. Just like the uh, zebras, they get darker. I don't know, you can almost see the baby behind there. Some more hippos. They love to look out at you. Oh, and if you go in the evening, you'll quite often get a pride of uh, lions walking along the side of the street. And they couldn't care less if you're there. They'll walk right up to you. This one was probably, yeah, maybe three feet away. Not a great picture, but now, now we're in Namibia. And can you see the difference in the shape of the termite mounds? They're, they're leaning toward the sun for some reason. And all the termite mounds just about that we saw in Namibia were shaped like this. And here we have a gems box. Also an antelope, but a different kind. And these are the kinds of signs you see in the street. They're kind of funny, really. Now, if you look closely, you can see a giraffe in there, in the tree, trying to stay cool and eating at the same time. Now, this is an, an acacia and I think you can see the, the thorns on it. How they can eat without getting those thorns in their mouth is totally beyond me, but they do. That's a male. And a kudu. And a springbok. The coloring is pretty much the same as an Impala, but it's a different breed. Warthog, another kudu running. I was happy to get one of it running. Now, now you can see the, the briars in that bush. And you just have to wonder how the heck they can eat the greenery without getting stuck with those briars. Now here's a 
a black rhino. Now, you, you can't really see it too well, but his lip goes down. His head is shorter, and his lip goes down and comes to a point under his chin. And that's because he will eat branches and leaves. And that's how you can tell the difference in, again, and this is funny because I learned all about poop while I was over there. But you can tell the difference between a black rhino's poop and a white rhino's poop because a white rhino's, it's, you know, it's the remnants of grass and such, whereas the black rhino's, you'll see sticks and leaves and things in it. So by the time we left, I was getting really good at this. And he's scratching his butt on the tree. These guys are smaller than the white rhinos, and they're not as broad as the white rhinos. And here we have a, where the heck are we? A jackal. They kind of look like a dog, but you don't really want to go up to them and pet them. And that was a black back jack jackal, jackal, excuse me, and a blue wildebeest. I'm not sure why they call him blue, but it is a blue wildebeest. And here we have a collared leopard. You don't see too many of these, but at some point he and a few other leopards in this area had been collared so that they could be tracked. And leopards love to stand on high ground to look out for prey. So the uh, termite mounds serve very well. And the collars don't seem to bother them. This was a big termite mound. He was right up on top of it. Now, if you can see those clusters in the trees, those are from the weaver birds, and they actually weave these nests and they hang down. And this guy, they told me it was impossible to get a picture of a crimson-breasted shrike. So obviously I had to make sure that I got a picture of a crimson-breasted shrike. And as it turned out, he was right outside my balcony. So. I was very fortunate to get a picture. <laughs> Not great, but at least a picture. Okay, here's an, our jackal again. And the cheetah. Looking very happy. These are the most beautiful cats. And their, their bodies are nothing, nothing but muscle. And that's why they can run so fast. But they play just like kittens. Now, I've got to tell you a story about this lion. We were in a concrete bunker, almost like a, a war bunker, you know, with a, a, a slot across the front that you could look out, but supposedly the lions couldn't get in. Well, the week after I was there and this exact bunker, this lion managed to get in through the slot and kill the guy that was feeding them. And fortunately, the other visitors managed to get out the back door, but it was the exact same spot we had been at. So we were very fortunate that it wasn't us. I guess you can tell I love eyes. He looks so innocent, but he's not. Okay, and here we have, um, what the heck are we up to here? 
several different animals, actually, several different kinds of animals. And an ostrich. Now, when you think about it, we're in the middle of a desert, and I mean desert. The Namib Desert is just unbelievably, there's nothing there. And to see animals out in the middle of this, just roaming around looking for water. And by the way, when we were there, they hadn't had a decent rain in the Namib Desert in nine years. So needless to say, these animals were trying to find water. And this is a rather large nest. And there's probably about 200 birds living in this one nest. And another one of the uh, roadrunners. Okay. What the heck is this one? I'm sorry. Sherrier. Oh, um, we had the Cory Bustard, then the Black uh, Corbin. That was a male. This is a female. There's the male. Again, we have a black rhino. Maybe there you can see a little bit of how that, that lip, that top lip comes down and wraps around. But this one, of course, has the two big horns. The other one has a short horn in back and the larger horn in front. And even the larger horn is bigger on this one. And zebras and kudus. There was a the the few watering holes they had just had all kinds of animals at them. So there were you can see the variety just because that was the watering hole. Now this is this is an older one because there's a lot more brown on it. This is a um, Gabber goshawk. And a hornbill. And this is an African March Harrier. And believe me, I am not a bird person, so it took a little digging to remember what they were called. Now there's an all black and white picture just about. Oh, yeah, the baby. The babies are so cute. And an impala up close and personal. And a female up close and personal. And this was a this was an amazing elephant family. There were, I think there were altogether twelve of them in this one little watering hole. And the baby was right in the middle of it. This baby's nursing. And the two little ones you can see down below are kind of playing with each other, trying to learn how to use their, uh, well, you can tell what that is. <laughs> and a couple elephants just playing. Obviously, I like elephants. And this is the older elephant, kind of training the younger elephant how to fight in the future and a couple ostrich and this is a uh, 
Lanner or Lanyer Falcon. Thought he was beautiful. Just absolutely striking. And again, the animals at the watering hole. And if you can see the way the, the giraffe is going down, it's the only way that they can reach the ground because they're so darn tall. So they really have to stretch. Now we're in Himba land. And this is where the Himba tribe lives. And this is what they live in. This is a hut for the Himba. And these are some of the kids playing. Just having a great old time. And they love to have their picture taken, especially if you show it to them. And I had actually brought a printer, but unfortunately the vervet monkeys destroyed it when they took everything out of my tent. So I didn't get to bring the printer. And these are the women and none of the women wear tops. They all go topless. And whether they're in the town or whether they're back at the tribes. And if you see that, that red hair, that's mud that they mix with an oil, an animal oil, and they lather, they put it on their hair and on their bodies a lot of times just to keep them from getting sunburn. Cute little guy. And I don't know how she stands upright. That's a lot of weight to carry. And this woman is putting that mud on her body. And they, of course, were trying to sell us necklaces and whatever. And they were having their little himba dance. But you can see all the hair has the mud caked on it on the, on the braids. Okay, and here we have uh, I'm not sure what this is. I apologize. So well here we are. We went to one place out in the desert where they actually had kind of hieroglyphs carved into the rocks. Not sure how old they are. And then when you go to the shore of Namibia um there's a lot of shipwrecks but you can see all the birds the birds love the shipwrecks and it was a really foggy day so it was hard to get any pictures but um they also had flamingos come on oh, oh. And then, well anyway that was a picture of the sign where we hit the tropic of capricorn and then just beyond that, some poor fellow had rolled his vehicle over. Didn't look like anybody was hurt, but this is just the surroundings. You can see how the earth has been upheaved, the, the mountains. And this is all in the Namib Desert. And here we have a guinea hen. And here are the uh, sand dunes. We actually climbed this dune. It was one step forward and two steps back every time. And by the time I got to the top, I didn't know if I was going to make it. But I'll just go through these quickly. But you've probably seen pictures of the Namib Desert. A lot of dead trees and beautiful orange sand. And some lovebirds right here. I'm not sure what the other ones were. In a baobab tree. I think one. Oh, oh this guy. 
was eating a dead mouse that he had caught. I think we're re Oh no. Here's some of the women dancing. And that is it. And I am just about on time.